Master's now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Today we are here for a very interesting webinar on design thinking, impact on designers and business manager. I hope the sound is clear to all of us. Today we have a very interesting format for the webinar. We have our two very eminent guests with us. We have with us Deepti Pant. Deepti has done her MBA and have nearly two decades of experience in design management. And Ambika Makotra, she is a graduate from NIT and have nearly 20 years of teaching experience. So now Ambika and Deepti is going to help us to know both sides of design thinking from the designer's perspective and business manager's perspective. Over to you Deepti and Ambika. Thank you. Okay, Deepti. Yeah. What I think when I teach a design class, that design is not at all frivolous. Design is not at all without any focus. Design is extremely human-centered and is about understanding the cultures and the context in which the human are living in to make it far more better, more impactful and more useful. In fact, the same qualities of design which are focusing on understanding the human behavior, the economics, the ethnography, where they come from is also very relevant to business strategy and business thinkers because at the end of the day, the product is bought by a human being. A product is bought by a human being under the influence of his culture, of his family, of the world around him and that is indirectly connected to the entire design thinking and design process. Yeah. So design is not only for visual, it is not only about aesthetics, it is not only uh, about just having fun, it is about problem solving and it is about a lot of good thinking. In fact, uh, uh, I really totally agree with you because when business managers, they do focus group interviews, they do qualitative research, they are trying to understand the visual world of the, the customer. They do something called persona mapping. They, they call, do something called perceptual mapping. The entire brand management models are based on the symbols and the icons uh, that a person or a, a group of people will recognize. And uh, when we really look at design thinking deeply, then we see that design thinking has been always dealing with these issues. But point was that, that it was de dealing with these issues within design studios, within design setups, and it never came up to the level of uh, business. Second thing uh, which I really find relevant here in, in the context of design thinking is that the design thinking is a problem solving. And managers are solving problem on just day-to-day -day basis. And if they will be uh, utilizing design thinking as a very interesting uh, uh, pedagogy of uh, solving their problems, then design thinking is actually is going to help them to be better business managers, to become better strategists, to uh, uh, becoming better people who can generate more incisive customer insights. And in fact, you know, the interesting thing is when students are in the class, when they get into uh, design discipline, uh, initially, even parents are so worried that why is that my kid is staying awake so late in the night uh, and why is it so much of research happening when I put my kid into design uh, profession because this is only for doctors and engineers and commerce people to be kind of staying late and working intensely on some kind of research. So it is something that we kind of try to give in to our students that a good design just cannot happen if there is no good design thinking behind it and it is a very intense process that how do they come to a good final product as a good outcome. 
the design aspect of any process, any solution is extremely important here because unless or until you have not uh, thought about uh, what really is the problem, then only you will be able to explore uh, uh, the solving part. And uh, when you when when whenever a designer picks up uh, any any object and he has to redesign it or design it in a new way, he starts thinking that okay, for, fine, what is I have to redesign, and that what is actually the problem that he's trying to find. And that is why the problem solving for designers is, is, is a very important part. It should be imbibed by business managers because most of the energy is lost in solving the wrong problem. Yeah. So if you have know the right problem, then you can solve the right problem. So but so that is where the design thinking, the, the genesis of design thinking really is beneficial for business managers actually. You know interestingly what happened today when I was mentoring my students uh, uh, one of the mentee comes with a very mundane inspiration and she says this is what I want to start off with and I just kind of took her through this whole exercise of that okay where and how do you start to design you cannot have any some good looking picture and say okay from here I'm starting to have my ideation process beginning so the moment you I, I told her do you know for whom are you designing who is this person you're designing is it a kid is it an old lady or is it somebody who's in 40s and are you empathizing with that particular age group, with the environment where this person is living in? She just went back and she says, okay, now I'm understanding where actually design thinking has to start off from. You have to empathize a lot with the audience for whom are you creating. So it is very important to understand who is my user when you're starting the whole ideation process. Yeah, I mean, uh, right now in business strategy departments, you have people who are called customer insight managers. And that is where uh, this particular context of empathizing with your user, it becomes very relevant. Mm -hmm. And that is why customer engagement, um, a lot of these companies like Reliance and Vodafone, they have, uh, they have these uh, schemes called connect schemes, mm -hmm. which are nothing else but, but to connect with your customer. And that is why, and and much before that, they need to understand who is really your customer. In banks, banks keep coming up with schemes, such loans for working women, such loans for women entrepreneurs. So I think, and whenever you actually go as a women entrepreneur, they have no idea that uh, who is a women entrepreneur for them. They just created a loan for women entrepreneur because it was cool to do so. And I think that is where the strategist and the businesses need to learn from design thinking that they need to first understand who the real user is, mm. what is he doing, what does he try to live, how will he how will he be benefited from a loan or from a phone scheme. But point is that, that nobody really no, nobody really takes design thinking as seriously. And I have a feeling that is because they really don't take the user so seriously as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's so right. if we see some very interesting ads have taken user seriously have done wonderful job and wonderful business in the end. Yeah, very true. <clears throat> so uh, they have to define their point of view that is based on the user needs and what are their needs is very important so after empathizing it is very important to further empathize who this user is and what are their needs which is to be understand, understood in depth for example if you're designing for um, uh, the officials who are standing on airport floor staff mm. what do they need do they need to stand out in those thousands of uh, people walking in there the commotion which is there so what kind of uh, uh, the uh, environment a person who's going to use that product or is going to wear that uh, uh, fashion, where is this person stationed? So that has to be defined and rewritten in a better and more clarity that uh, for whom are they taking this? So that becomes a very important aspect in design thinking to define their uh, user. You know, there is a very important uh, point in design management or in management for ethnography. And ethnography is basically des uh, deciding about their needs. Because what we need doesn't, doesn't always come from today. I have seen so many of my cousins who have been brought up in small towns, but when they grew up to be, they were, they were, they had, they were the IT IMS kind. So they traveled internationally quite a lot way back in 1970s and 80s and 90s. But even in a flight, uh, and even in a Lufthansa flight, they would order alupuri. 
Mm. Uh, so, you know, the ethnography part becomes extremely important. And if you were a Lufthansa flight person, Lufthansa flight owner, and you there is a very Indian Indian senior manager is traveling and you don't have an alupuri, he will never travel in your flight again. So uh, these are the ethnographic needs that you know that only design thinking takes care of, which is not taken care of by the other aspects, whether quality research or market research. But uh, uh, but a lot of business uh, business uh, conglomerates and the organizations they are now uh, realizing that we need to really go back and look at the business needs, which are just not the needs of today, like the pastas and the maggies or the or the. Uh, or, but they are the needs of yesterday and what will be the needs of tomorrow and design I thinking think, uh, actually yeah in this I think how Pizza Hut came to India I mean if they wouldn't have done it mm -hmm. properly that what are the taste buds of Indians exactly, are yeah. they wouldn't have been a success yeah. story I remember when, when, yeah. when Mac came in it was 70 rupees and nobody bought it and another one year down the line became 20 rupees because nobody would buy where we have Vada Pao, uh, Vada Pao in Maharashtra roads Bombay roads for 5 rupees, you will never buy a, a, a English vada pav for 75 rupees. So that is why they, they had to actually bring down their uh, money. You know, another prices. example which can be quoted is where Nano went wrong in their design thinking. If they wouldn't have sold this car as a car for a poor man, hmm. it would have not lost the business. business it was issue. like, okay, this is the most compact and most user friendly car, then it would have done a great business. Yeah, very so true. how are they defining the need of that product? Okay, so uh, with all empathizing, defining, then ideation begins. That when they are kind of uh, as a process, as one of the steps in good design thinking. So when they are brainstorming and coming up with many uh, solutions as possible, so students are kind of uh, pushed to think as wild as possible to break down all the boundaries and not to be thinking as conventional thinkers. So they are pushed to be unconventional thinkers to come with more possibilities. So a lot of hybridizations and oppositions which are kind of mixed match, jigsaw puzzles are kind of created so that they have number of uh, uh, solutions which are coming in and they, and solutions which are kind of surprises to them. You see ideation is something which is very well respected in design world but if you come to the business world, once I was taking a seminar uh, on design thinking for uh, a, a firm which creates your tires, hmm. the chemical for the tires. So they are a group of these scientific engineers, the managers and all that. And, and actually I was doing design thinking seminars, so it was to come up with all weird kind of ideas and open up your mind kind of ideas. And uh, most of these people came to me once the seminar during the lunch time and the tea break that you have. They came to me and said, ma'am, if we really start doing this in an office, we'll be thrown out the next day. So, uh, though ideation is pretty well respected in the design world and creative world because that is how the great mm. films and great products are made, but uh, uh, in the management world, uh, following the orders is more the norm and uh, people are extremely uncomfortable with coming up with new ideas and I think if, we, they go, if the entire organization goes through a design thinking process, then they will be able, then people will be also comfortable giving their ideas and yet not feel threatened that their job will be blown out. So I think that is something design thinking can take care of. Design thinking not just being a strategic process but also an HR process. Mm -hmm. And there uh, ideation is respected and it is understood that this person is coming with this new idea because he was a part of the ideation framework, not because he has to. He really is doing some or wants to do something different. And don't you think people really feel too jittery being very uh, uh, open to have a lot of ideation yeah. elements? Within our uh, uh, design worlds, in design studios or design classes, I believe ideation is one of the most important uh, exercise which a student or a designer has to do and the most respected thing. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, kind of something which is misunderstood when design students are in class, they just want to kind of have a quick solution to a product and say, okay, over with five number of solutions. So this is a time when they can actually explore a lot and we have something called as mind, body, soul alignment. Mm. So your mind is doing some thinking, soul is some kind of finding out things. It's the body when you are kind of into it and you are kind of physically creating, uh, you are uh, ex uh, putting your hands into something, you are uh, kind of literally fiddling with so many things to come with some very exciting solution is the winning point in the whole process. I mean, I believe in uh, design thinking, this becomes an extremely important point where you can come up with 
the best of the solution if you have done your previous processes well. If you have found your user and what actually the user need, what kind of environment you have to give it into it and you have understood that bit, here you can actually channelize yourself nicely. But what happens is when you are working for some kind of a client for example, then there are restrictions in it. So when we are saying come with wild ideas, so it is also misunderstood that wild ideas could be that you give anything to whatever age group. So uh, in defining there is this like how you redefining or rewriting your design brief that you have put those limitations and you have a focused direction. So you've kind of shift the ideas also to cater the best to the user. You know, here I'll give you a, a, a project that I had done for BMGF when I was heading CKS, which is an innovation and a design management company. Uh, actually not BMGF, Echo. They were designing um, a user interface for semi-urban women, semi-urban immigrants, to so Bihar or UP say, out there mm -hmm. and those kinds. And uh, so we, first of all, as usual, we did search with them, we understood what the client is, what the need is, what the consumer is. And when we started to the brainstorming level, then we started realizing one thing, that these women have two phones. Oh. And we realized that, and all those two phones will be 100, 200, those, those second-hand Sustawala phones. So why they had two phones, we were wondering. And um, then, we, then we again picked up our bags and went back to them. You see, the ideation sometimes also makes you go back to your research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and your consumer and said okay why do you have two phones then out of 100 women that we have interviewed around 25 30 or only came with this reason that most of their husbands are either drunkards or drug addicts or white beaters or they go to other women so what they do is that they have these other phone through which they transact their finances and that they don't tell their husbands that they have this uh, phone so the husband would never know how much money they have so your yeah. research must have taken a whole. Uh, we then our research totally took a whole, oh, totally lovely. new turn because yeah. then we were actually because this was a user interface we were designing for SBI for immigrants, and then we actually what we did was that we started putting password, a uh, user app which will be on the phone but it won't can't be seen on the phone. Then we started uh, giving them a cloak facility. So then our entire app design, the entire approach changed. That even if you've downloaded an app where you can transact an SBI transaction, but you can cloak it so that a husband. Uh, might never know, will mm. never know that what kind of money you have. So now ideation process also helps you to go back and yeah, find. Then, yeah, so interesting that the ideation process only led you to this. Yes, thing. exactly. Yeah. So it Otherwise you would have played it very safe. We have done the yeah. new normal app design yeah. that we do, nothing very yeah. exciting. That's why. Okay, so the, coming to this that we have to actually discover a lot. So that yeah. was a discovery for you mm. in this matter where you are researching, listening to people, interviewing the customers mm -hmm. and uh, understanding their culture, context, their needs, problems, goals. So that discovery is extremely important. So not playing it safe, as in your case, you went back to kind of finding out why is that these women have two phones mm -hmm. and then defining the problem and the solution again. So it's applicable whether yeah. you're working. In fact, here I will tell you yeah. another case study which I had done. Again, I was working with CKS only and we were working with UB. And uh, UB, in, even with United Breweries, we were looking at the very high-end customer who hmm. buy who will buy a wine bottle for uh, $2,000 and things like that. So we were researching them. First of all, to find those customers was also a big problem. So finally, after three months of research, we got down to finding only 25 customers who were ready to get themselves interviewed and understand their life process and design process. So uh, once the entire data was collected, persona building happening, lifestyle study happening, everything happened, photographs were done in a huge full of room, we had those photographs of the, all these UV people stuck up and everything, we came down and we, our entire team sat together. And it was to basically look at the, um, because for UB actually we had to give them solutions around drink only, and uh, because it was a, uh, it was a uh, alcoholic liquor company. So when we started, we sat down, then we, we re interestingly we realized that People of that level, they do not drink to get drunk. They drink because it is a social uh, uh, social pleasure. Uh, pleasure for them. Oh, yeah. Uh, unlike the lower levels, the middle class and the lower middle class also get drinks to get drunk. So as you go higher up in the in the hierarchy, and as you are getting more money, then you actually then very interestingly, the uh, drinks are not for. Uh, to get drunk, like there's a word called nasha. So there's very interestingly, excuse me for the fact I'll use Hindi. There's one gentleman uh, from Gujarat. He said, "Ki main pita nashe ke liye nahi hoon. Agar nasha karna hota hai, to main drugs leta." Hmm. 
So there is very clear demarcation for them. If they will do have do nasha, they will take drugs. If they will drink, then they will be drinking. It will just for a social pleasure, a little bit of tipsy here, a little bit of fun. Mm. Then, so what happened? Our problem statement changed. Yeah. So the entire, mm. uh, then we realized that we have to design huh. such bottles or such entire uh, design strategy which is for the people for who are seeking pleasure. Yeah. Who, are not get, who are not looking at alcoholic bottles but looking for more decorative and pleasurable bottles. And then our entire design strategy, our approach, everything changed towards the contest. So, so with this example, it becomes such an important thing for any designer any to business sensitize also. Yeah. themselves to the entire environment. And parallelly for the uh, businesses because yeah. if he will give this design solution to the customer and actually his bottles will be picked up more because they are just no longer bottle carrying a wine or a whiskey yeah. but they are bottles which are are socially relevant bottles. They are bottles with different kind of shapes, different kind of messages. And I think and you know here it. comes all the good filmmakers. Yeah. Also because they've sensitized, they've felt exactly. that subject matter so well. That's the reason why they can actually document such a beautiful film and have it as like a hit to us. I mean, I believe what is PK doing at the moment? Uh, what an interesting character which has been shown through Amir Khan from where he's landed up and how they've kind of defining, redefining and further defining the whole understanding of mythology and the culture there. So it's kind of really uh, uh, picking up a good business. Mm. And uh, I think in this also what I read today in Rediff News is that his wife is now asking for her um, benefits. So the definitions or these discoveries could be so interesting. So prototyping which becomes so important after all this when you've done a good research, if you sensitize yourself by putting yourself into the customer's shoes, what exactly they need, uh, what best could be a solution given to them. So with not many ideas, uh, the best ideas are sieved in and they are kind of uh, made into prototypes and it is a must to prototype before making the final, final stuff because then you can actually uh, experience and uh, face all the failures with minimum input. Yeah, in fact, yeah. one day once we were doing a color <clears throat> material in a finished project for a phone company which is a multinational and we had strategized a certain color for them and we started making the color on the on the on that piece of wood and we had to actually create a board for them of various colors. So as soon as we made that green and we kept it out in sun to dry, the green would change. Again we made that green and then we realized that this green cannot actually work in India because India with 48 degree temperature in certain parts, this green actually under harsh la, harsh heat will change the colors. And unless so that is unless you don't really go down prototyping, you really don't understand that how much of uh, and uh, had this not been done at a prototyping level, the company would have lost the business because person buying that green phone would have bought the green phone for the green thing. And if the heat changes the green, then you would definitely feel cheated. So you will not really go back to buy the phone again. So I think prototyping really helps the business, which more of most of the business managers don't really understand. Because if you put them a bill of prototyping, they say, no, we will not pay for that. <laughs> but you, need, you have to really tell them that prototyping will help us to make mistakes at a very small level, which if you will do it in a, in a factory scenario, will cost you a lot more money then just doing it at a one or two or a hundred product level actually, that's why. And you know with prototyping again, uh, it is to be tested and tried in that particular environment which gives you the uh, best example whether it's going to be a hit product or it's going to be a failure. For example, sometime back we were, were like as a student I got an opportunity to work on Gujarat police uniform. So we were like, okay, we are going to delete khaki color. We, are, we hate because history told khaki had come from Britishers. Mm. So we tried all different kind of colors and we made all the samples, made these police men, mm -hmm. so-called fake police people to stand in the crowd and they were going completely unnoticed. Mm. And then we went interviewing people that, okay, why is that? You know, you're not noticing he's also a policeman who's standing there with a baton and all these accessories all around. Mm. Sorry, it's only khaki that we associate with. You know, so it was such an interesting thing before coming to that we had this fancy in our mind that okay, give all fancy colors to police and we can make him look really wacky. It didn't work. So it is again that what has been uh, deep rooted. The semiotics yeah, and the semantics yes, yeah, of the yeah. of the uh, customer yeah. that is extremely important to understand. Very, very important. And that is what design thinking helps us yes, to understand yeah. and the business strategy yeah. doesn't. And that is how design, design as designers we must value.
all this. Yeah, and also business people need to value mm -hmm. it because this is going to get them a deeper, incisive understanding of the of their customer, yeah. of what of the customer needs, and also what in future he will need. And prototype prototyping will help them to understand that uh, that at the factory level and at the manufacturing level, those mistakes, how much it's going to cost. Yeah. Actually, that's why. Uh, I went to buy a fridge mm -hmm. recently, and I was so aghast to see these very decorative floral patterns on a fridge. I'm like, gosh, we'll buy this, you know. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like fridge for us is like completely solid in color. Mm -hmm. But those patterns, I asked the shopkeeper, I said, who picks it up? He said, oh, I'm getting so many orders onto it. Oh. And after some time, I was attending this conference where. Mm -hmm. uh, the head designer from LG was talking about it. He said, fine, I get all my inputs of design specs and all coming from uh, uh, their uh, head office. But he had to get into the process and tell the guys there, mm -hmm. foreigners, that listen, I cater to Indian market, Indian clientele, so I need to have that Indian element seeped into, seeped it. into it. Yeah, so those floral patterns were kind of done for just heck mm -hmm. of it and they became a hit. hit yeah. Yeah. And they are retailing pretty well. So testing where what works and what doesn't work is extremely important that we've spoken about. In fact, testing also helps mm. you to go back to again to the first year yes. in case you yeah. failed. Yeah. I remember once uh, when I had just started my design career and just after I passed out of design school and uh, uh, we made this huge uh, Almira for a client and we uh, carried it all the way to the uh, client's office and we put it there. And we waited for the client to come, tea was served and all that. As soon as we started out, so sir, this is the Almira and the Almira came crashing down. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, we picked up our blocks together, wrote them down, put them on. And, you know, two of us together, we, we, me and my friend, we started as partners. And we put them back into, and we had that a very second-hand Tuti Puti Maruti we had. And then, uh, and then we had put it there. And uh, very interestingly, when we started remaking it, then uh, we realized that what are the mistakes we have done and we had given a lot more value to the customer and till seven years when I was running my own uh, design studio he was a continuous customer because most importantly he saw that you know that we, we, we were very sincere towards creating a value for him so when we so uh, testing also helps you that way, you know when you yeah. fail even even then when you recreate it actually gives you a lot of learning experiences you know, in this testing we did, uh, I did a little exercise with the uh, foundation students uh, where there was, we spotted an area where it is generally too crowded and I, the challenge was to make it less crowded. So students were coming with all possible solutions. So this one man, boy who comes and he just uh, displayed one mirror there. And you know, everybody was just looking at them and walking past, looking at them and walking past. Nobody actually stood in front of that area because then it was like, you know, you are into the mirror yeah, so yeah. that yeah, that psyche which started to work so it was an interesting outcome there so so holistically we see design thinking is not really just for designers it is also for business business managers and strategists why is it so because we are trying to find order out of chaos we are looking at elegance we are looking at customer centered solution we are looking at solutions which has which has an emotional, emotional appeal yeah and we are trying to give them mem mem memorable experiences. That is what, right now, if you go, whether you go to a mall or whether you go to a, buy a product itself. I mean, they have these apps. Why? You have these apps, you have these games to basically give you experiences and nothing else. And this I won't let you speak. Storytelling. <laughs> yes. Because I believe any product, if designed well, as a storyteller, you know it the best. But I believe any product has to have a story behind it. Then only it can have, leave an impact. And when you go back, the craft products, they are yeah. such wonderful yeah. stories exactly, and they just come and touch your soul. Mm. So are we also talking about, because you know in this mass production it's like in the peer led, in the herd culture, we have actually forgotten something as storytelling. Mm. So uh, I keep pushing my students to come back to this whole mode of storytelling. Mm. How can they just seep in a lot of experiences before designing a product and in the end when the product is designed, how can they actually speak about it? And every little moment that they've spent doing, talking to people, going to sourcing, how it can just add to the value of a product. Very true. And another thing I really like that uh, what is being written is surfacing uh, unseen opportunities. Because I, I gave you an example of the Almira. So when we started redoing the Almira and, we, and also that SBI user uh, interface that we did for those uh, illiterate women, when we started looking at uh, from a very different design thinking angle, then we saw a lot of opportunities which we could do. and. We also saw very interesting things that that we say illiterate, hmm. 
But very interestingly, whenever I've gone to any village and you've done any rural ethnography or a customer uh, engagement uh, research, then what I've, I've seen one thing repeatedly is that people are not illiterate. They are just literate differently. Yes. They understand. Just because they can't read English or read books, but they have their own language, they have their own visual uh, dictionary, and they have their own uh, way of communication. So, you know, design thinking also opens up your mind yes. towards the people. Yeah. You know, you suddenly you are humbled by the variety yes. that nature has given you. And, and, and helps us keep our egos away and get yeah. into their you, you, world. You, when you look at, yeah. when you do, go to those villages, they are least bothered about those big English books and those huge yeah. philosophies they are talking about. Their focus is more on, if there is rain, then how do I save my crops? Period. The story yes. ends there. Yeah. For them, it doesn't matter what uh, Socrates has said or how Alexandra won. So, you know, you, you, are, yes, no, you are very largely humbled by the entire thing, actually. So and uh, and uh, also looking at visualizing information, the world of tomorrow is totally moving towards visualizing information, infographics, game design, the way people are now not doing PPTs but doing films, and the Prezi software is taking over yeah. PPT. That is actually a kind of filmmaking which I say. So entire thing is design thinking. It is a design thinking yeah. process. The envisioning of future possibilities can happen so concretely and precisely to design thinking. Then crystallizing ideas, what we do in ideation all the time. We try to crystallize idea, come up with that. And we are building a prototype. We are basically trying to give an idea a shape. And then finally decision making, prototyping solutions and efficiency. It becomes a larger part of design thinking. And these all these things are very, very relevant for a business manager because he will be, he use he needs these things to understand his market better, to understand his customer better, and then to improve on his sales and also strategize his future, his business's future actually. Okay, in the end, it is quite interesting that leaders and managers need to think like designers. Leaders and managers really, and they not only need to think like designers, but they need to also approach every problem, every context like designers, so that they are able to go do what we say is deep dive, iterative immersive thinking yes, yes, yes. which designers keep doing we look yes. at a uh, look at a design we say okay fine even with our own design we look at it 10 even after 10 days and you do a design and then you look at it and you say oh my god i think this needs a change but somewhere you have to stop i was reading an interview of steven spielberg the filmmaker and i read he said even sometimes i watch my film though they have got those oscars or those total applause i say oh my god is a wrong cut i made in that particular point you see so Every creative person is always iterative. He wants to go back to his uh, work and improve more. Yeah. And I think that is what leaders and managers need to think because most of the leaders and managers think that they've, they've done it, they've done it and that is right. And you know what is design doing here is design is creating the future rather than hitting and solving the present, present problems. Exactly. This is so important. And for designers, you know, it is very important to be also playing a role of historian, anthropologist, ethnographic, sociologist. Yeah, I tell you, I have I, this is my personal experience from uh, when I was uh, I was looking to do my uh, advanced design thinking program, and I was I had gone to an IIT professor at Bombay, uh, Mohan Bandari was his name, and uh, I was married with kids and all that, and you know the kind of uh, uh, load is on. So I said, Sir, how can I do this program? I have two children, I have and one children is ill, one son is ill, and I can't do that. He told me what exactly your line is saying that focus on the larger picture and the smaller steps will take care of themselves. Yeah. Actually, so it, actually a good design is also a good mindset. Very true. Very true. You said it. It was great talking to you Ambika. Same here Dipti. Yeah, and I think uh, all of you there would have got a very clear indication about uh, how about designers things and how design thinking can be used by managers and leaders to be able to solicit and understand and take their businesses into farther, further and a deeper and a lot more cash ringing into their box office or into their businesses so that uh, you are able to be uh, able to connect with your customer more. Predominantly design thinking is all and about think, that. Yeah, and design thinking is also not being so communist, it is also being too democratic. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Wow, that was really wonderful and it was so interesting to listen to both of you with such wonderful example of the khaki which you gave, the mirror in the crowd and the SBI how they handle the immigrants and the Almira which you made for your client. <laughs> it was really, really very insightful and I think 
all of us have really learned very very good things about design thinking and process okay the forum is now open for question and answer if anyone is really trying to ask anything to the speakers they can please type it in the box in the mentioned below Okay, um, we have one of the participants who is trying to know whether it is through video or not. Uh, yes, this is a webinar which is more today in the audio mode. In the future, we can have a video mode webinar also. This present webinar is more towards audio with the PPT which is shared with all of you. Further, we will share the link of the video with all the participants. Okay, we have some questions uh, across uh, Dipti and Amvika. Uh, one of the participants is eager to know what are the career options one can go for further down the line with a design thinking based career. What are the career options one get into? See, it's again uh, too discipline specific, uh, but if you are, uh, I believe if there is a wonderful design thinking, you have a systematic approach to solving problems and you are like a jewel in any kind of setup. Yeah. yeah, but can you uh, just highlight some of those uh, main uh, fields which one can get into? The main field I think you can get into is that first is you can uh, you can look at uh, you can most of the design thinkers let us let us look at this way design thinking comes with design thinking right now as of now in the set of education is more of a domain of designers right now apart from a design management program uh, the business people the commerce people the MBAs the engineers are not much privy to design thinking let us be very clear on that and hence uh, what happens that design thinking is not really much understood and uh, it is uh, it is thought of a voodoo or a mumbo jumbo which these designers who uh, people are from outside the design world think that we are blessed with certain kind of creative thinking and we come up with this suddenly creative ideas and we make your products or your dresses or your films or your whatever so it is not so like that design thinking is a detailed creative process which every designer goes through, some of them live it and some of them understand it, some of them it is inbred, some of them are taught in design school. So it is it is more like that. It's so perfect. coming from there, a design thinking for a designer helps him to understand the strategy far more deeper and proper, helps him to look at look at the future of design in a far more deeper and a proper way. I would say it makes him a storyteller. And you know, I, I what I believe is if you plan the way you plan your day in an order, it is also a kind of planning. Yeah which is put in with a little more tweaking here and there, experimentation here and there. So you're not too rigid in your planning. Mm -hmm. You've taken a step through three, four, and if you see, okay, third is not happening well, so you come back easily to one. So you're not too rigid with solving a problem within that planned day. Yeah. Second thing is with respect to design, business people or the entrepreneurs or commerce people or engineers, then first thing is does is that it helps you to be comfortable with chaos. So what happens in a structured learning of an MBA or an, uh, as an engineer, it helps you to become, so if you're an entrepreneur, your initial beginning will always be chaotic. You'll be, you'll be fighting the revenue battle, you'll be fighting the staff battle, you'll be fighting the people battle, you'll be trying to understand the market, you'll be running it from your home. So it helps you to be comfortable with that because at the end of the day, this is the beginning of a process. You see it more as a beginning of a process. So that is what design thinking helps you to do. Secondly, it helps you to go back go back again and again into the future and into the past to be able to look at your consumer more clearly. That is what every business person or an entrepreneur needs to understand is to understand his consumer very very clearly not be hypothetical or judgmental about him. He is a person which you have to serve not vice versa. Consumer is the king. So that is where a design thinking process becomes very relevant for people who are in business, people who are either setting their own or they are running 
on somebody else's business like in corporates. Third, what uh, design thinking helps is, is, is being comfortable with new ideas which still can't be created. What happens that most of the engineers or most of the managers are not very comfortable about having ideas which cannot be done right away. We in the designers are very comfortable with future. We are very comfortable with stories. We are very com comfortable with the possibility. And that is what design thinking really helps you. That, okay, fine, there's a possibility. We'll design a way out of it. But engineers and business managers, they are not very comfortable. They're trying to they're surfing technology all the time. They, 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 are trying, they, they are trying to find answers right now. Designers are very comfortable with future and that is what every business person or every entrepreneur has to be comfortable with is a future which he cannot define right now. So if you're not able to define a future, you don't need to be uncomfortable. You need to live it and you have to create it for yourself. And that is what design thinking actually teaches you. And that is why design thinking becomes very relevant, not just for designers, but also for business managers and entrepreneurs. Yeah, that's that's really great, Dipti, because that was one of the questions by one of the participants who wanted to know what is the relevance of design thinking for young entrepreneurs. Uh, so with this, we close the webinar for today.